to the Marketing Toolkit TV show. I am Robert Gates with your host. If it affects my stakeholders, it affects me. Over at Amazon, the bot for doing the firing. Man, they got a bot for everything now. If you have built your business model on one-off sales, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. They don't have a better product than you. They just have better marketing. Welcome to the Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Now, we might save a soul along the way. Hey, don't hold it against me. Let's call it icing on the cake. Thank you for joining me for another Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'd just like to uh, thank you again for making this show the success that it has been over the years. We're going on 11 years. Now we already wait a minute. We already passed eleven years. We're going on twelve years now, so that's quite an accomplishment. Thank you, and you have made this possible. You've made this possible. Got a lot of things going on. Got a great show lined up today. Later in the show, we're going to talk about what type of business owner are you. We're not all cut from the same cloth. It's not a one size fits all. So you may fall into one of these four categories. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the um, industry life cycles. Every industry must go through this. And when you decide to start a business, well, if you decide to buy a business, join a business, it's going to be in one of these cycles. And the approach for each cycle is different. We're going to talk about that later in the show. But got to got a lot going on, a lot of things going on. But you know what? I want to start out with something. Now, if you're under the sound of my voice this morning, that means, first of all, you have internet. You probably have a you're in a house or a car, you probably have a computer or an iPhone. You probably have a job or some type of livelihood. In other words, things are pretty good. Things could be a lot worse. What we have to do, we have to learn to do is appreciate these things that we have. I mean, there's some people out there really having some hard times right now. We have people in New Jersey right now who are underwater. We have fires out west. We have some people who are just having difficult times with their jobs. They've been displaced, replaced. And so I'm going to assume that right now you don't have a ventilator tube in your mouth, in your mouth because of COVID. And if you did, hey, thanks for listening anyway. Praise God for giving you the ability to tune in. Uh, but my bottom line is things could be a lot worse. We have to start appreciating the small things and stop worrying about things that are not that don't matter. Stop sweating all this small stuff. Don't be a worry what people are having hard times. I mean, sometimes I'm dealing with people on a daily basis and I'm sitting here looking at some of the things that they worried about. They're using this precious psychic energy that we have. We don't have an unlimited supply of psychic energy. We need to save that energy for the big issues and let some of this small stuff go. I'm telling you, we have too many things to be doing. We've got to go out here and make this money, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'm going to say, let's save that energy for the big stuff. And let's not sweat the small stuff. That's my message for you today, because let me tell you, you're going to need that. <laughs> you're going to need that energy as we get down the road. So thank you again for tuning in. I'm Robert Gatewood. I'm the producer and host of the Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'm here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. You can find out more about me by going to gatewoodmarketing.com. You can also go to marketingpulpit.com where we have the shows. You'll see today's show and you can follow the past shows. And just one day when you have, you're just feeling like you need, to, uh, need that boost, need some marketing knowledge, need some inspiration, just get yourself comfortable and sit down and just go through some shows. Go to about five or six shows and and you'd be surprised the impact it might have on your business. So welcome again, welcome again, welcome, welcome again. Sitting here thinking about these uh all these worrying people do. You know, it reminds me of this story. A uh, guy said, uh, look, I'm kind of worrying. So he said, look, he told another fellow, look, if you can find me somebody 
who would take all my worry off my hand, I'd give him a thousand dollars. So he ran the guy ran in the airport. First person that came to the door. So look, I heard you looking for somebody to take all your worries away. The guy said, Yeah, that's right. He said, All right, hand over the thousand dollars. You gotta look at me. He said, well, that's my first worry. I don't have a thousand dollars. Let's put some of his worries behind us, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome again to the show. We got a lot going on today. First thing we're gonna do, do we're gonna talk about the news. We have to talk about the news to give us some context of what's going on. We need to know what's going on in the world. So hang on a second. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. We're going to talk about what's happening in the news. And later we're going to talk about also war in the workplace. Why is everybody so angry? We got, man, we got to get this under control. This is the Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'm Robert Gatewood and I'll be back in a moment. One of those pivotal aspects of business success you have to tie it to something, you have to ground it. Because marketing is all about psychology. It's understanding human behavior. Success is not a finite. You have control over what constitutes success. All right, welcome back to the show. This is Robert Gatewood. I am the host of the Marketing Public TV show. Not saving souls, we're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. Thank you again for joining us for the day. Let's talk about some of the things that's happening in the news today. Now, McDonald's and McFlurries. McDonald's has this popular dessert called McFlurries. And if you've ever been there to try to get them, in most cases, and more often than not, they're not there. The machine is not working. As a matter of fact, it became such a response to people who are trying to buy this dessert that it actually caught the eye of the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. They're like, hey, are you guys trying to trick people into getting in there for this McFlurry that you never have? So interestingly enough, the FTC is looking into this case where McDonald's McFlurry seems to never be in stock. <laughs> wow, never thought about that. Google is pushing people. Uh, they're not. They're, they're pushing their date to return to work. They're pushing it back. So now they pushed it all the way back to January 2022. And this is happening more and more often. We thought this uh, pandemic would be over by now. So companies like Google and Facebook, they're pushing that date further and further back, which I think is a good thing. Give people that flexibility. And let's, you know, let's try to keep people safe because this variant is not playing. It is actually not playing at all. So good for Google. Uh, now, Walmart is planning a hiring spree. They're figuring about uh, their 250 locations. They're about to hire 20,000 workers for the upcoming holiday season. So if you're ready to uh, jump into the Walmart, uh, <laughs> into the Walmart uh, company as an employee, come on out. They're hiring right now. And uh, let's talk about Zoom for a minute. I was checking out Zoom this morning on my app, on my Robinhood app, and their stocks, man. I think a few months ago they were up to 400 bucks a share, down to down to 296 bucks a share. Is I mean things have the fortune changed for Zoom all of a sudden? Well, so it seems. Is the Zoom boom over? I think what's happening, people are actually starting to trickle back to work, and I think it's also part of that fatigue that people are feeling. They're just tired right now of zooming. They're tired of sitting in front of the camera all day long. They want to get back out. They want to start spread their wings. And uh, so that's I think that's having an impact on the Zoom stock. Another thing that's happening, too, is that people are being evaluated on their Zoom performance. Companies are actually reprimanding and firing people for poor performances on Zoom. Because really, Zoom has almost taken the, taken the place of your work, your work uh, performance. So if, you're, if the job requires you to be a certain way at job in your person, but you suck on Zoom, that's starting to spell doom for many of the workers today. So there are people out there that are actually take, giving classes and giving advice on how to give a better Zoom presentation because now that's part of your of your job of your job uh, description. Uh, let's see, GM plant is having a shortage, and when you think about a GM plant, you know, place like General Motors and Ford, when they say they're having a shortage, you don't think of you think of things like mufflers and tires and batteries and brakes. But what they're having a shortage of is microchips. 
That's right. Your car now is one big computer. Now, that's something, I, matter of fact, a few months ago, I was talking to my brother, and we were talking about these microchips, and we went ahead and bought some stocks because we knew this was coming. And they, I must admit, those stocks have performed remarkably. So uh, GM and Ford are filling, are filling the pain of these, this shortage of microchips. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Shark Tank star Kevin O'Leary and Kevin Harrington are being sued for fraud. I guess Mr. Wonderful is not so wonderful after all. <laughs> they were pushing some, uh, what they call a predatory fraud scream. It's about to go to court, so I don't know if they did it or not, but several people that hired them, their companies in Venture X or Ideazon. So apparently uh, O'Leary and Harrington were steering people towards their their uh, invention companies. And so they're being sued. So Mr. Wonderful, not so wonderful after all. <laughs> all right, hang on one second. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna talk about this war in the workplace. Why is everybody so angry? This is the Walking Pulpit. We'll be right back in a minute. One of those pivotal aspects of business success you have to tie it to something, you have to ground it. Because marketing is all about psychology. It's understanding human behavior. Success is not a finite. You have control over what constitutes success. talk about war in the workplace. I talk about stakeholder relationships quite often. Stakeholders is anybody who has a stake in the success or failure of your business. And generally these components, these ingredients work in concert. They support each other. We have synergy. They're like, you know, freaking frat working together. But every now and then, what we're seeing right now, we are seeing them come to blows, literally. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're seeing people come to blows, literally. Now, of course, I call this lockdown-itis. I think because we've been in this lockdown for the past few months, over a year now, going on two years, that people kind of lost some of their social skills. And I hope so. I hope this is not the new norm. <laughs> I hope maybe once this once people get out and start mingling with people again, that they can come back to them, their normal senses. But right now, we're seeing some very unusual hate behavior. For instance, in Dairy Queen, a customer urinates on a counter in an argument over a mask. So apparently somebody asked this guy to put his mask on. to get into an argument. And so instead of putting his mask on, he took out something else and urinates on the counter. Okay, well, man, thank goodness we have our family, right? Because when we have these tough days, people are urinating on counters, they're fighting over masks. Thank goodness we have family, family to the rescue, family to the rescue. Let's see here, Illinois man kills brother during vaccine dispute. Okay, so much for that idea. Police say a 68-year-old man shot his half-brother during an argument in Southern Illinois. They got into a debate over the vaccine. 
why all of this animus over a vaccine and a mask? Everything is so political now. That is so wrong. Yeah, brother, over a vaccine argument. What, how do we get here, ladies and gentlemen? What is wrong? Why is everybody so angry? Thank goodness we have laws to protect us from this type of madness. Thank goodness we have people in positions of authority, maybe to help us get some of these guns off the street and out of the hands of people who shouldn't have them. That's why I'm glad we have a government that's responsible with level-headed individuals. Let's see, new Texas law will allow residents to carry guns in public without permits or training. I can't, I'm not making this up, folks. I couldn't make this up if I tried. In Texas, they just passed the law. No training required, no permit. You can carry it around now in your back, in your pocket. You don't have to conceal it. I'm trying to just think now. I'm trying to put myself on the other side for a minute and think of what the rationale behind this might be. We know what the actual rationale is. We know what the Second Amendment is all about. You can dress this up. But I'm asking you, ladies and gentlemen, at some point you got to ask yourself, what are these people up to? What are they up to? What are they planning? What are they working on? Are they setting up a scenario so that one day when they ring a bell, everybody will already have their weapons in their hands? They won't have to go look for them or get registered or get a permit? Are they planning something that we need to know about? Reminds me of a Rwanda where they were on the radio and they were calling me the, the uh, Tutsis cockroaches and calling them names and and you had this radio round the clock propaganda uh, demonizing the other side. Hmm, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? The 24 hour demonization. And then they made sure that everybody had a machete. I mean machetes were flown into the country by buck box loads. All they needed at that point was a trigger. Ring the bell, blow the horn. Hmm, sounds familiar. What are these people up to? All right, ladies and gentlemen, hang on a second. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back. We're going to finish up the news. This is the Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'm Robert Gate with your host. We'll be back. Rayford Lee Brown Sr. I am the owner and founder of BNB Cleaning Services LLC. We are a janitorial floor cleaning and property maintenance business. I was watching what was happening in Afghanistan. I'm seeing mothers and fathers throwing their babies over razor wire. They were yearning to be free. And that freedom is something powerful, isn't it? That you would take that kind of risk, standing in long lines, people shooting at you, trying to blow you up to be free. 
I want you to free yourself and take that same type of attitude, that same type of vigor, that same type of passion to free yourself. So free yourself from the shackles of excessive spending, from materialism, from keeping up with the Joneses-ism and all other types of isms. That's right, because just like these people are throwing their babies up to try to get them over the wall into freedom, we should have that same type of passion for our babies, for our children, so that they don't become the next generation who are going to be played by the corporate oligarchs while we sit by and do nothing. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to the Marketing Pulpit TV show. those pivotal aspects of business success, you have to tie it to something, you have to ground it. Because marketing is all about psychology. It's understanding human behavior. Success is not a finite. You have control over what constitutes success. Welcome back to the Marketing Pulpit TV show. I'm Robert E. Wood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. bringing you the good marketing gospel. We're not saving souls, we're saving businesses, saving jobs, saving our community. We were talking about war in the workplace and why is everybody so angry? So we're doing our news. It's a segment we do every week because we're trying to bring civilization, uh, civil discourse, comity, and just plain old common decency back into the workplace and into our environment. So that's why we do these stories. I wanted to give you some context on what's going on. And one, another thing, not to let you become a victim of it or a participant. So we're talking about what's happening in the workplace and how we can calm things down. Well, let's see here. We've all heard the saying that curiosity killed the cat. Well, apparently curiosity needed some little help he needed an accomplice in the name of the Dallas police officer. A Dallas police officer was placed on leave for allegedly killing a cat. Okay. Now the police officer said he came to this, he was called to this scene of a disturbance. And when he got there, he saw a cat in distress. And he killed it immediately. Well, first of all, how do you know if a cat is in distress? What is it biting his nails? Is, is it pacing? Is it smoking? I don't know. I mean, really, I don't know how you tell if a cat is distressed. But apparently that police officer saw, he saw some distress and uh, we don't know why the cat was distressed according to the story, but does it matter? I'm just curious. How do you know if a cat is distressed? I just, I guess some of you cat people out there can help you out on this one. It's not a laughing matter, but I am curious how do you know a cat is in distress? And secondly, why do you kill a cat that's distressed? I mean, I know curiosity, but distress? I don't know. There's a video circling, circulating around the internet where somebody was having a party, a pool party, at an Airbnb location. And the owner came out to calm down the noise and let people know, look, it's getting out of hand here. And instead of the party is calming down, they pushed the owner into the pool. And when he tried several times to get out of the pool, they kept pushing him back in. 
I tell you folks, I've been telling you about these, this experiment, things like Uber and Airbnb, where you, where we're interacting with these total strangers. I mean, people, we don't know who these people are. I mean, we got people jumping in the back seat of our lifts and Ubers, and you don't know who these lifts and Uber people are. I mean, there have been like 130 people killed this year, uh, lifts and Ubers. I mean, not this year, since they started. I don't know, maybe it's the year. I don't know, but it's been a lot of people have been killed. And so, and then Airbnb, now we have this kind of thing going on. I don't know where this is going. I think they may, they need to take this back to the drawing board. Let's see, a couple was convicted of scamming Uncle Sam out of $21 million in COVID relief money. If that's not bad enough, <laughs> They were already under, uh, I guess they'd already been arrested and had. Uh, they were forced to wear ankle monitors. They cut the ankle monitors off and flew the coop. So now this, this couple is out on the lam. Uh, they took their $21 million. I guess they got enough money. To, they can probably do, you probably had pretty good with $21 million. <laughs> I hope you can play a, pay a couple of folks to keep your keep you under wraps. But man, the world has gone mad. Folks, we need civility. We need people to calm down. We need people to look themselves in the mirror and say, look, I'm not going to participate in this. Maybe we need to go to church. Yeah, maybe that's it. We need to pray more. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm going to recommend. Hey, let's go to church. Let's go to church. While I do my last story here. Man arrested after hidden cameras found in church bathroom. Okay, maybe this church is not the best place to go. Folks, this is the Marketing Pool of the TV show. I'm Robert Gatewood, your host, and we are here every Friday at 10.30 a.m. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about, do you fall in one of these four business types? I'm pretty sure if you're a business owner, one of these is going to describe you. Also, we're going to talk about the industry life cycles. Every business and industry goes through these cycles, and you need to know which one you're in before you make major decisions. So this is the Marketing Pulpit TV show. So hang on a second, we'll be right back after the break. One of those pivotal aspects of business success, you have to tie it to something, get it grounded. Because marketing is all about psychology. It's understanding human behavior. Success is not a finite. You have control over what constitutes success. 